Okay, let's do a quick production function example. And in this example, I'm assuming we're looking at Duke Energy, and they're producing power using two inputs, F for fuel and K for capital. And usually in, in these problems, you'll have labor and capital, but I thought I would mix it up a little bit. Uh, let's look at the short run. We're assuming here fuel is a variable input, and uh, capital is a fixed input in the short run. Let's see what kind of decisions we can make and how we solve for these. So let's suppose to start with that uh, the cost of fuel is $4, the rental rate on capital is, is uh, sorry, $16 per unit, and in the short run, Duke has 100 units of capital. What do we do? Well, what we do is we look at this production function here, and we simplify it. We say, well, the output now is 10 times the amount of fuel to the one-third times the amount of capital, which is fixed at 100 in the short run, raised to the two-thirds power. And so let's take a minute and just simplify this. I'll pause the video and you simplify this function and see what you get. Okay, so what I got here is uh, this is going to simplify down into output is just uh, 215.44 uh, times the amount of fuel raised to the one third power here. I'm trying to get the uh, lines small enough to where I can write those small fractions. <clears throat> and you can see them. So uh, this is our simple output function. Now if you wanted to do what's called a, we could call a fuel requirements function, or sometimes a labor requirements function, if that's your variable input, then what we were trying to do is solve 215.44 uh, f to the one-third equals q for f. And what that will do is tell us how much fuel you need to get a certain amount of output. So pause the video and see if you can do that. Okay, so if you solve this function for f, you get uh, f equals q over 215.44 cubed to get rid of the one-third power. And that gives you this as your fuel requirements function. And then you can plug in any quantity, say this 500 here asked about in the question, and then you get the answer that you would need 12.5 units of fuel to get 500 units of output. Now, let's answer this second question here. What if uh, we needed 1,000 units of output? How much fuel would we need? Well, let's plug 1,000 into this uh, question here, and let's see how much fuel we need, and let's talk about whether they have increasing, decreasing, or constant returns to fuel. So plugging in 1,000 in for Q, that get that we need 100 units of fuel to get 1,000 units of output. So do we have increasing, decreasing, or constant returns to fuel? We have decreasing returns to fuel. How do we know? Well, what we did is we more, have to more than double the fuel to double the output from 500 to 1,000. We have to uh, multiply the amount of fuel by much, much, much more than doubling. So this tells us that we have decreasing returns to fuel here. Okay, let's look at the next question. Uh, in the short run, what is Duke's short run total cost function going to be? Label which part is the fixed cost and which part is variable cost. Calculate their total cost for producing 1,000 units of output and 1,001 units of output. Okay, well let's do that. How do we do that? Well, what we want to do is take into account their um, cost of fuel and their cost of capital. So their total cost here is going to be the, t the cost of capital is $16 per unit. 16 times. How much capital do they have? 100. Plus, what's their variable cost? Well, their variable cost for fuel is $4 per gallon times how many gallons they need. Now, a total cost function is a function of Q. So what we want to do here, instead of putting um, $4 times F, we want to put $4 times this, which is still equal to F, right? So times 0.00001Q cubed. 
And what that does for us is lets us plug in any quantity and it'll tell us the total cost. So total cost equals 16 times 100, that's 1600, plus 0.000004Q cubed. And this is the fixed cost portion that doesn't change with quantity, and this is the variable cost portion that does change with quantity. Now all we have to do is plug in a thousand units and a thousand and one and figure out how much our costs are and then we can talk about variable costs real quick. So take a minute and do that. Alright, so um, Oh, sorry, you can't. You're not going to be able to see that very well over there. But uh, I calculated the total cost of a thousand units to be two thousand dollars. The total cost of one thousand and one units is going to be two thousand one dollar and twenty cents. So we can tell by looking at this that the marginal cost of the one thousand and first unit is a dollar twenty, one point two dollars, in other words. All right, D, what is Duke's short-run average cost function? Calculate the average cost of producing 750 units of output. Well, to take a total cost function and get an average cost function, you just divide it by Q. So all we have to do is take this function and divide it by Q. So average total cost equals 1,600 over Q plus this 0.0000004 Q cubed over Q. And so one of those Qs is going to cancel, and you'll get Q squared there. Now that gives us an easy function. I can just change that to a squared. Scratch that out. Now we have an easy function to calculate the average total cost. Just plug in 750 into this function and see what you get. And I just plugged in 750 and for here and here, and I got about $2.36 as the average variable cost in the short run when we're producing 750 units of output. Um, what is their short run marginal cost function? Well, to get a marginal cost function, you take the derivative of a total cost function. And so the derivative of this total cost function is just going to be the derivative of this part because there's no Q over here. So, well, or this way is the easier way to do it. So what's the marginal cost function? Marginal cost is equal to 3 times that, so 0. 0.0000012Q, subtract 1 from the exponent, squared. There's a marginal cost function. Find the marginal cost of the 1,001st unit of output this way. Now, it should be similar to what we got up here. Let's see. Well, 0.0000012 times 1,001 squared. I get $1.20. All exactly what we got up here when we were looking at the total cost of the 1,000 and the 1,000 and first unit. Okay, so F, still in the short run. Suppose that Duke can sell electricity for $5 per megawatt. Will it make a profit if it sells 100, 1,000, or 5,000? Well, I'm going to have to take a break here, and I'll come back and make a second half to this video in a little while. So see what you can do on this, and then I'll come back and finish this up in a little while.